Ladies and gentlemen, from Nine Inch Nails, Trent Reznor. Trent Reznor. Tonight we are here to give praise and respect to one of the most instantaneously recognizable and sonically unique rock bands of the 20th and 21st centuries. They've changed the face of popular music indelibly during their 40-year history without ever having to compromise their sound or aesthetic. Tonight, The Cure enter the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I grew up in a small town, small town USA, Mercer, Pennsylvania to be precise, where there was nothing to look at but cornfields. It was a uh, primitive time, long before the miracle of the internet arrived to devalue our wonderful art form. And uh, even pre-MTV, with nothing to listen to on the radio, nothing to do but dream of escape. When I left home, it was time for the big city. In my case, the big city of Cleveland. And everything changed. It was the mid-80s, and just being able to tune into college radio made my head explode with limitless possibilities. This was my baptism into the world of alternative and underground music. The sounds that informed what Nine Inch Nails would eventually become. And one of the most important aspects of being swept away by this tidal wave of new music was getting to hear The Cure for the first time. Immediately, this band struck a deep chord with me. The first album I heard was The Head on the Door. And I hadn't heard anything like it before. You know, a lot of darkness I felt in my head was coming back at me through the speakers and it blew my mind. It was like this music was written just for me. You know? you know, I've struggled my whole life with feeling like I don't fit in or belong anywhere, kind of like right now. Uh, and hearing this, suddenly I felt connected and no longer quite so alone in the world. That's one of the things I find so unique and special about the power of music. But uh, it wasn't just the sound, the words, or the presentation. All of it was anchored by the most exquisite of instruments, Robert Smith's voice. That voice, capable of such a range of emotion from expression, from rage, sorrow, and despair, to beauty, frailty, and joy. It might sound naive, but until I heard the head on the door, I just didn't realize it was possible to write about such difficult and profound ideas, but do it in the context of accessible songs that might even get played on the radio, challenging norms from the inside. Another huge inspiration for me. Anyway, I listened to that record nonstop until I wore the grooves clean off the vinyl, and then I worked my way backwards. There was a rich and important back catalog waiting for me. The group that would be, go on to become The Cure formed in 1976 in the suburban English backwater of Crawley, a small town that all the members also dreamt of escaping from. They were four imaginary boys, Robert Smith, Lowell Tolhurst, Michael Dempsey, and Pearl Thompson who were energized both by the explosion of punk that was happening miles up the road in London and by the heavy psychedelic rock from America, which they'd grown up loving. After a few lineup changes and the creation of some timeless post-punk and new wave, the band entered 1980 as one of the groups who had come to define the music, the attitude, the look of the decade to come. Singer, guitarist, and songwriter Robert Smith, bassist Simon Gallup, Drummer Lowell Tolhurst presided over a trio of classic albums, 17 Seconds, Faith, and Pornography, that would help to become what would be known as Gothic or Alternative Rock. 
Just as everyone else was getting to ready to jump on the new sound in which The Cure helped usher into the world, they were already ready moving to pastures new. Robert Smith was keen to show the world he could do so much more than monochromatic doom and went on to write and record a series of songs that became huge hits right across the globe and are rightly still seen as classics today. The Love Cats, In Between Days, Just Like Heaven, Lullaby, Love Song, Close to Me, and Friday I'm in Love. The 13 albums they've recorded over their 40-year career stand as a testament to their undiminished power and an artistic imagination. And despite making challenging music that deals with the biggest themes, their impact has been gigantic. They've sold the best part of who gives a shit how many million records and have been an essential touchstone in the genres of post-punk, new wave, goth, alternative, shoegaze, and post-rock. You can hear their clear influence on countless bands today, including my own. The Cure have been in and out of fashion so many times in the last four decades that they have ended up transcending fashion itself. While they might be a quite a hip name to drop in 2019, this wasn't always the case. Their dedication to pushing sonic and artistic boundaries while making music for the ages wasn't always rewarded with glowing reviews in the press. But they never failed to attract a passionate, intelligent, and loyal fan base who've always known the truth. The Cure are one of the most unique, most brilliant, most heartbreakingly excellent rock bands the world has ever been lucky enough to enjoy. And no one needs to question the loyalty of Cure fans. Before you even hear them speak, as soon as you see the hair and makeup, you know how they feel about their idols. And I feel the same way too. Quite understandably, most musicians can tend to differ from their carefully cultivated personas to one degree or another. But as far as I can tell, Robert Smith is that rarest of things. A 100% authentically Robert Smith kind of person who lives a 100% authentically Robert Smith kind of life. And he's used this singular vision to create that rarest of things, a completely self-contained world with its own sound, its own look, its own vibe, its own aesthetic, its own rules, which us, the fans, get to visit and immerse ourselves in whenever we like. A custom world made for anyone who's ever dreamed of escape. And if that isn't the life's work of a true artist, I'm not sure what is. I should uh, make a full disclosure at this point. Um, I think it's only right for me to admit that in the past I've been, let's say, ambivalent about the existence of certain award ceremonies. And I've perhaps been in the habit of questioning their motivation with a certain degree of cynicism. In fact, uh, I remember distinctly saying to myself, amongst other things, how can I even take this award ceremony seriously if they'll open their doors to X, Y, and Z, but they won't even acknowledge the cure? <clears throat> and then, not so long ago, I got a phone call I wasn't expecting, and well, here we are. Let's, let's just say I've never been as happy to eat my words as I was on that day. Tonight, it is my absolute pleasure to invite to the stage Robert Smith and his band of merry men. Michael Dempsey, Lowell Tolhurst, Pearl Thompson, Simon Gallup, Boris Williams, Roger O'Donnell, Perry Belmonte, Jason Cooper, and Reeves Cabrell. Please welcome to the Cure to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> 